Okay, the next concept we're going to talk through is the idea of data visualization and data exploration. So before we do fancy statistical models, typically we want to just check it out. And often the exploration techniques we have include visualization. And the tool that we're going to use called ggplots, which is part of the tidyverse inside of R, um, what's nice about it is the techniques that work for simple plots also make it easy to make more complicated or fancier plots that we might want to look at later. So the main idea to start with is the idea that when we're thinking about what kind of graph to make, we want to start by thinking about what kind of data we're going to look at and how we want to look at it. So um, the short answer is we often want to look at categorical data, which are categories, and numerical data, which are numbers. Of course, there are different variations within that different versions. But typically for categorical variables, in a one variable case, we think about bar charts. For multiple uh, cases, we would make a two-way table or a chart. Numbers, however, we would either make a box plot or a histogram to start with. And again, hopefully you remember those from your intro stat course. The question though is what happens when you start to look at more than one variable at a time? And for numerical data, if we have two numerical data, two numerical variables, then a scatter plot is going to totally be the variation we want to have. When we're looking at categorical variables against themselves, stacked bar graphs are what we want. And when we mix the two, we're going to often make box plots to look at how numerical variables look for different categories. Later on, we're going to talk about what we do and we want to look at three variables. And do we want to make uh, just even more box plots? Do we want to make a third variable in scatter plots like color or size of the dot or that kind of thing? But um, for most simple investigations, we're going to make either one variable or two variable charts. The other thing we want to think about are the kind of compelling stories that we can have. A good visualization tells a story. And the idea is that the mapping should help explain what's going on rather than uh, make it more complicated. So in general, just like when you write a story or when you write a paper, you're told have one thesis, make everything tie into your one big idea. The same thing is true of a visualization. And even looking historically, there are some really good and some really uh, interesting cases of graphs. And these were done by hand well before thinking about the idea of doing big data or any of that kind of thing. Uh, this is one of the first big charts uh, that came out. And this is from uh, Dr. Jon Snow uh, before he was in Game of Thrones. Jon Snow was one of the founders of epidemiology or the idea that we could study public health through uh, statistics. And there was a cholera outbreak. And what he did is he took a map of London and he started putting dots where everyone who had cholera had. And he realized that there was a water pump right here in the middle. And sure enough, uh, that uh, pump had been poisoned uh, accidentally, and everybody who had the contamination got it because they were taking water from that water pump. Um, another graph, this is even older, uh, was a graph of um, how Napoleon marched. So this is a mix of a geography map moving from Paris to Moscow with this many troops. You can see that as the graph got narrower, there were fewer troops. And by the time you got to Moscow, uh, Napoleon had lost a big chunk of troops. And as they retreated, you can see uh, how they got even worse. And it turns out that when you're um, invading somewhere, burning the crops behind is not actually a good idea. And uh, this graph was actually uh, sort of famous from Charles Joseph Menard, who's one of the famous uh, graphs people. Now, Dr. Thatcher includes one other graph here, and this is one uh, that he found on the internet. And um, the idea of uh, political parties. And this graph is very complicated, it's confusing, and it's hard to really tell what's going on. Now, if you are looking for good public graphs, Gapminder is a, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but Gapminder has a tool specifically to make simple population and public health visualizations. Some of you may have heard of Tableau, which is also software uh, that's specifically designed for visualization purpose. Now, thinking about how ggplots is going to do it, gg stands for the grammar of graphics. And the idea is um, we're going to do um, kind of a common language to make graphs. 
And as we try to make different graphs, we're going to try to keep uh, the terminology the same. Um, just like before, uh, there's actually a very nice uh, cheat sheet on the RStudio site uh, that helps with ggplots, and I'll link to that in the uh, Google Classroom site. But the idea is we're going to start by talking about what data set we're using. Then we're going to use geom to talk about the geometric graph, the kind of visualization we're going to use. And then we're going to use a mapping to decide how the variables are going to be assigned. Those are sometimes also called the aesthetics to figure out how they're working. Then everything else is added on later. And what's nice is if we're going to use that Titanic survival data that we used before, we start by just saying, here's the data we're going to use. And of course, at this point, there's no graph made. And then we use what we call a pipe, which is a way to connect to the next line. And we use the command geom point, and a point just makes a point graph. And then mapping just says what variables we're going to be using. Now, mappings can either go here in with the geom, or they can go at the top. Um, either works. And as you get better at it, you can actually leave a lot of these out. So you can actually just go geom point x equals survived, y equals age. But seeing how the grammar works in its fullest sense uh, makes it easy to see how we can go. Now, uh, individual value plots like this, dot plots, um, are kind of nice, but you would probably make a box plot in this case. Well, what's cool is we can just switch geom point to geom box plot, and it's going to make the same graph. And you can see that everything else in the code is literally the same. So geom box plot is what we use to make box plots. We can start to add more functions to make fancier box plots. So we do fill equals passenger class. So the first, second, and third class, and you can see how those variables go on from there. Now, um, if we start to look at uh, maybe a chart of that, what you see is that um, we can't actually make this chart in a more complicated way um, doing the simple thing, but we can add stat summary. So stat summary, what it does is it makes a function called fung.y, which is just the mean. And now we can color that mean as a red and we're going to use a point to show it. So now we have our box plot and now we've put a dot with the mean uh, right there on it. So you can see that the grammar of graphics starts simply and we just start stacking things on top of it. And as we get towards the end of the semester, you'll be able to make really cool, really interesting charts using this simple notation. Um, and like I said, getting more and more complicated. Um, we'll have a lab and a homework assignment where we'll talk about the more specifics of the terms that we're going to use.